Hi, I'm Eric and this is Adventures in Golf. And for this episode, I'm going to show you what I think is one of the best golf road trips on planet Earth. It also holds a special place in my heart because 10 years ago, I came here and drove around and played almost all of these courses. I also slept in the back of my car and uh, we had a lot of other adventures along the way too. So join me as we recreate it. It was 10 years ago that I first started my journey into golf, and I know I've said it before, but since that first tee shot, golf has given my life direction and a sense of purpose. In my wildest dreams, I could never have imagined what these last 10 years would bring, the places I'd go, the people I'd meet. Golf was, is, and always will be more than just a game. As time moves on, I get further and further away from those early days of discovering golf. Which is why in this episode, I'm stopping the clock and I'm going back to what is for me the best golf road trip there is. Five months after my initiation into golf, I drove across country from California. I learned about the Robert Trent Jones Trail or the RTJ Trail for short, and I thought it would be the perfect place to continue my golf education. The RTJ Trail is a collection of 468 championship holes on 26 courses at 11 different sites spread across the state of Alabama. And they're all designed by world-renowned golf course architect, Robert Trent Jones Sr. At the time, I managed to play many of the courses, but I missed out on Ross Bridge in Hoover, one of the longest golf courses in the world. Topping out at 8,191 yards from the back tees, I've been dying to play this course ever since. And this morning, I finally get my chance. Ross Bridge was worth the wait, instantly moving into my top 10 for both accessibility, price, and just general beauty. From here, I'm headed just a few minutes up the road to RTJ Trail, Oxmoor Valley. This is the first course to open on the trail, so this is the alpha of the trail. Amazing. This is Bill Lang, no relation as far as we know. He's the PR director for the RTJ Golf Trail. Bill explains how the trail came into being. The whole vision behind the trail came from Dr. Bronner. He came up with the idea people were driving through Alabama to come to Florida. So they may stop and get gas or you know, maybe a bite, to, quick bite to eat, but it was never really a destination. So Dr. Bronner had the vision to create a golf trail. So he wrote several different golf architects saying, would you come do this? And a lot of them laughed and threw it away. And uh, Robert Trent Jones Sr. came out and said, are you serious? flew to Alabama and said, you know what, I want to be a part of this. I think Robert Trent Jones Sr. and Dr. Bronner hit it off, saw the vision of creating something that you know nobody had ever tried, tried before, and, uh, and it's become a phenomenal success. The idea was to do something to bring in money to the state of Alabama. And the Dr. Bronner that Bill is referring to is uh, Dr. David Bronner, CEO of Retirement Systems of Alabama, which is the pension fund for all state employees, including teachers. So here we are at the Retirement Systems of Alabama headquarters, which is really where the money for the Robert Trent Jones Trail came from. And this is also where the office for Dr. David Bronner uh, is. In my cartoon collection, that means that you've been a bad boy. <laughs> what is that? If you have a cartoon made about you? No, that would be like a newspaper that writes an ugly story on page one usually. And then... Uh, about you? Yeah, or the pension fund. And then uh, they followed up uh, with an editorial. <laughs> and the third shot of the newspapers used to be a cartoon. And then they'd start all over. Dr. Bronner begins by explaining that traditional pension funds invest people's money in the stock market. But these days, investments can be anything that shows a promising return. 
Golf courses aren't typically considered a great business, though. No, they stink. <laughs> so, so why? Why the trail? Uh, well, I got a little frustrated. Uh, there was a, a problem in Alabama about its history, a problem about racism, and uh, about 40 other problems. So I decided that, you know, I, I was here long enough, uh, so why not uh, just do something different to change the image of the state. So what I was looking for was a methodology to change Alabama, and, and that area was tourism. If I build a factory, and I have done those in Mobile and Birmingham, places like that, it affects that community, but it doesn't affect the other end of the state, or the west or the east, or things like that. So what you trying to do was to create an industry that you affected everything. So in a way, the 11 sites with all of these golf courses, is, it's almost like you created like a pinball machine for people just to stay within Alabama. Right. Whereas before they just kind of passed through. They, they, oh, they, just, were, they were going through as fast as they could. There was no reason to stop. There was no a museum in Montgomery yes. and Selma. Yes, and a hot dog and let's get out of here. Well, with the trail, you're, you're trying to say, okay, I'm trying to divert people, number one, which, which we did, and we have, and we do. And number two, it also helps me try to create industry to come to Alabama. The trail helped recruit Mercedes to build a plant. With that success, Honda saw it, they built a plant, Hyundai built a plant, Toyota built a plant. It's kind of become known as the Detroit of the South, and it, it's been great. When we started it, uh, the tourism element in the state of Alabama was 1.8 billion a year, and now it's over 15 billion a year. Since opening in 92, we've had more than 13 million rounds, uh, typically more than 550,000 rounds a year uh, from people all over the country and literally all over the world. Our last stop on the trail is RTJ Capitol Hill in Prattville. There are three courses to choose from, but I'm here for one very specific purpose. We're gonna go visit a historic place in my own life. Um, we're not really sure which course that it actually was. We think it was the judge, um, but the site of my first birdie, we're gonna go back and visit, kind of like going back to elementary school. Maybe it will feel smaller than I remember it. I was told that you had 10 architects in your head of who could do this big task. Can you tell me who the other ones that didn't get the job were? I never have. You never but told there, anyone? There weren't 10, there were four that I contacted. And Trent was the only one that called me. So an interesting detail about the Robert Trent Jones Trail in my life is I couldn't really afford to get a hotel room so I would just shower here. For a public golf course, the locker rooms on the RTJ Trail are pretty incredible. You could play 36, Go shower, get in your car, feel like a brand new man. Go to Olive Garden, get the bottomless pasta or bottomless salad, and then just go crash out in the back of the station wagon. There are so many great memories from that trip, but like all memories, as time goes on, they fade away. Luckily, cell phone photos don't fade away at all. In fact, this one even has the location tagged as Prattville. So even though I can't remember the hole or the course, I'm hoping someone in the pro shop can help me recognize what hole this actually is. Senator. It looks like a link style. It's got the bunkers, the, the mounds, big greens, big fairways. So it's beautiful. Yeah, we're excited. The head pro believes the course is definitely the senator, and the consensus is that it's the fifth hole. I, I, am, I am super excited. Uh, I guess not a lot of people have this opportunity to go back. I, I don't think a lot of people will remember where they had their first birdie. In fact, comment below if you remember where you had your first birdie. All right, so Senator Course, fifth hole. From here, it looks like fifth hole is 611 yards from the back tees. They said keep it left off the tee box. I don't know, folks, I got a good feeling. Do I need the driving range? No, never, I never need the driving range. Meep, meep. Dr. Bronner said, you know what? We need to create a golf trail to have um, open access to anyone so anybody can play world-class golf. So in doing that, he opened the doors for great golf not just poor municipal courses, but really world-class courses that anybody could play. Do you think what you did actually changed the game of golf? 
We provided the average person with championship golf. Provided them with something that they could never, ever think of paying on their own. I mean, Ross Bridge is, it's up there. I mean, it, it is very well up there. All right, so this feels like it. This is the eighth green at the Senator course. I thought it was the ninth. We went to look at the fifth. The guys in the pro shop thought it was the fifth. That wasn't right. I didn't remember trees on the right. I feel like I'm reconstructing a dream that I had about a golf hole that I played 10 years ago. Um, and we're here. We tried the 10th hole as well. It wasn't the 10th. Uh, this is the eighth, okay? The eighth is a, uh, I have the scorecard here. The eighth is um, from the tips, it plays 558. And the other reason why I think it is the eighth also is because it bends to the right. I played a wicked slice in uh, the first several years and even into today's golf. But also, there's this little mound right there. That's the little mound. And you can see the green. This is it. Now we gotta go see the hole because this course isn't open right now. They just redid all of the greens. Definitely worth coming back to check it out with good greens. So we're gonna find where the hole is and then we're gonna play to it and we're gonna see if we can birdie it again. My first four. I can't believe it. It feels like coming home. All right, pin is sort of middle back left. I can see the hole right there. All right, let's tee it up. This is definitely the one. All right, folks, looks like I'm, uh, looks like I'm about to, I'm a little nervous. I'm, I gotta admit, I'm a little nervous to play this hole. Not in the fairway, but uh, I know where it went. These are truly Irish links, these kind of dunesy kind of mounds on the edges of the fairways. Uh, and we've got one to deal with right now. I guess if I don't make birdie, I, I come back in 10 more years and try to make a par. <laughs> I need to get up and down from 250. It's possible. It is possible, my friend. All right, here we are. The final shot to recreate the first birdie of your life. I guess it wasn't that easy back then. All right, I left myself about 20 feet <laughs> for far. Close. Well, looks like I've gotten worse the longer I've been playing. Maybe a bogey? Maybe? Very good. Six with a wedge. The lesson, folks, is don't try to beat your records. <laughs> All right, so after showering inside, all clean from a day filled with golf, I, uh, I didn't have this kind of SUV back then. I had a decidedly older model. Chuck the clubs in the back, and uh, like I said, go get dinner. And uh, for some reason I found that the best place to get dinner while on the trail for me was Olive Garden, night after night after night. So let's go hit up Olive Garden. You know, the other interesting thing that I forgot to mention is basically I would come in here and to the right is like the bar. And so I would come in and I would sit at the bar and watch Phil win the 2010 Masters. And my brother and my dad had Sunday tickets to the Masters and they were standing, happened to be right off of the pine straw on 13 where Phil hit that hero shot through the trees. And they're actually on TV regularly when they show the shot of Phil hitting that shot through the gap in the trees. My brother and my dad are like this. So it was kind of crazy to think that that moment also is like an indelible moment in time for them. All right, so now after having the uh, belly full of pasta, as it were, um, we are looking for a place to uh, hole up for the night. If you have a, 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 a properly functioning fear mechanism, you should be scared sleeping in your car, no matter how tinted the windows are. On my 91 Volvo 240DL, they were heavily tinted, but uh, sleeping in the car seems pretty intense. 
But the great thing about sleeping in your car outside of a hotel like this is if you walk in with any sense of confidence, you will be entitled to free breakfast, free coffee, and a functioning bathroom that basically nobody uses because they all have their own hotel rooms, which you do not. Um, so anyway, that's the game plan. <laughs> I feel slightly ashamed, but also very proud.